Hi, and welcome to this episode of I've Got This Kid. I'm your host, Sharina Williams, licensed speech and language pathologist, homeschooling mom of two, wife of one, proud podcaster, once again here on the scene to share everything speech, language, play, development, and all that other stuff that falls in between. World Changers, we are continuing conversations this season about just stuff that we don't necessarily always get to talk about. The stuff that makes you go, hmm, or the stuff that you've probably been navigating through and it's like, ah, I just kind of deal with it. But you know what? I'm here to talk about it. So last week we talked about navigating insurance. The week before that, we talked about brain and gut. And now today we're going to be talking about functional living. Functional living? What does that mean? How we function every day, how we get through life. More importantly, are these goals working for us? Are the assigned goals that we have prescribed to us right now, is this a fit? Does it work for me? Does it work for my family? Does it work for my sugar? Am I seeing progress? If not, we might have to put a flag on the play. Why? Because it makes no sense for sugar to be pulled out of class or for you to be shuffling them to different sessions every week if the goals are not working or if you don't understand the goals or if it's just not applying to everyday life. And so that's what we're going to talk about. And it's going to be a blast, a blast. So I I just want to start off with this little analogy. Like, Have you ever gone shopping or asked for help out in the community? And you find that every item that was offered to you was not what you asked for, or it was really great, but maybe not any good use for you. Eventually, what happens? You either stop shopping at that store because they never have what you need, it's frustrating, and or it wasn't available, or you find it somewhere else, or you simply give up because the item does not exist or you haven't found it in existence and it's just, you're over it. And so that's how some families feel about goals designed for their sugar for a purpose that should reach a common goal. And I hope that makes sense. Like goals are designed for a purpose for your sugar to reach a common goal, a common ground to get to a place. But it should also make sense to their world and to you. And so before we really dig into stuff, let's just define what's a goal. A goal is a purpose to meet a need. It tells us about a gap in a functioning area, right? If it's a articulation goal, remember that speech sounds, then we want to improve upon the sound that's not being produced. If it's a expressive language goal, maybe sugar doesn't have as much vocabulary as they need. Then we want to minimize that gap between them not having a lot of vocabulary and then them having more vocabulary. If it was a receptive language goal, then that could be something like they're not following directions or they're not following multi-step directions or they're not even listening at all. And we want to minimize that gap to where they are listening. And so that's how goals work. That can happen with behavior. If it's a sticky behavior, transitions are hard. Then we want to, we want to bridge that gap between the transition or the difficulty with transitioning to get them to getting them to be comfortable with transitioning. That's how goals work. It should be based on something that's either reported observed or a tested outcome, right? You can't just pull this goal out of the sky. (laughs) I think this is a good fit for you. You can't do that. It doesn't work like that. You can't bippity boppity boop it. But it should be something that has been experienced, right? Based on parent experience and then they're reporting it or teacher experience and they're reporting it or something that was observed in class or by a professional or by the parent or based on outcomes that were tested by a professional, right? And so we look at what we expect to be quote unquote normal and we find the areas that don't quite measure up and that's where we wanna create a goal, the areas that don't quite measure up. We wanna push to progress, y'all. And so we use the goals in speech world to provide a map of what we're working on and why we're working on it. But, flag on the play, not all goals are great goals and not all goals are functional and appropriate. Oh my gosh, if I say functional and appropriate again, right? The reason why I say functional and appropriate is because you can have a sugar with different areas that aren't necessarily where they should be. And goals can be created that are not necessarily, I don't know, top priority. 
it might be a gap in functioning for sure, but it might not be the best priority. Let me give you an example. So let's say we got Lil Sugar who has a language delay, but has behaviors, but academically there's some gaps. Not a lot, but a few. But mom and dad are having a difficult time getting sugar through the morning routine. From the time that sugar wakes up, it's a fight. It's a fight to get their clothes on. It's a fight to get the diaper change. It's a fight to get the clothes, you know, the shoes on. It's a fight to get them out the door. It's a fight to get them in the car. It's a fight to get them to the class. It's a fight to get them to get through the class. It's a fight to get them home. But maybe the goals are sugar. We'll look at a person and say, hi, mm, is that important? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. That's pragmatics, right? We want sugar to be able to say hi, but the bigger picture and the bigger goal that probably needs to be addressed is how do we get sugar through the day without falling apart or being resistant every step of the way, right? Functional, functional. We deal with the functional first and then we deal with the other stuff. Why? Because when we're not dealing with functional first, mom and dad, and most of the time educators are struggling and muddling. And they feel like, and this is just based on what I've heard over the years, my child is getting these services and it's helping. For sure it's helping, but it's not necessarily helping in the areas that I need the most help. And in a lot of cases, As the parent, they would say, I didn't even know that the therapist could work on that. Mm. It's a real thing, y'all. And so I want us to all understand, yes, like tested outcomes is going to give us some real good information. But if we have a sugar who has some sticky stuff going on, we probably need to address that first. And We have to ask ourselves these questions as world changers, right? We have to ask ourselves this. When we're getting these goals, when we're sitting down in these meetings, when we are going to these IFSPs and these IEP meetings, or we're meeting these new clinicians, especially if you have a young sugar who is just now being introduced to the world of early intervention, we really want to know, is the goal proposed meeting my sugar's immediate needs? If sugar is not talking, but sugar has five different behaviors going along with not talking, we need to address behavior first. Because if sugar is not using their words, then they're using their body. And so, again, we need to make sure that the stuff that we're working on is appropriate because there's nothing worse than building up vocabulary and still having a sugar that's behavioral because they're still defaulting to the behavior versus defaulting to learning how to use the proper tool. World changer, the next question you need to ask yourself. Is the goal meeting my family's needs? The first was about sugar's needs. Next, family's needs. This is to make sure that you as a family is able to thrive and nobody's walking on eggshells because we don't know when little sugar is going to spontaneously combust. Or if we're out in the community, is sugar going to spend 30 minutes on the floor with me negotiating with them to get up and stop tantruming because I won't let them do X or I won't let them have X or they don't want to be here or they're overstimulated or whatever is going on. And so we need to make sure that the goals are appropriate to help sugar thrive with the family, to alter behavior, unwanted behavior, right, to create a healthy approach appropriate environment with healthy, appropriate habits, right? And I know that this stuff is touchy for some because this is what some world changers are living through day in and day out. And nobody's really having the conversation that, hey, I need help and I don't even know where to get it. And I even know that I could get it, right? Or I just think my child is bad in behavior and nobody told me that this behavior is associated with X or why this behavior is associated with this diagnosis. It's a real thing. Did you world changers know that for a very long time in the world of speech and language pathology, and this still holds true in certain cases, that in early intervention, a lot of times autism spectrum disorder, ADD, ADHD, and expressive language delays all pretty much look the same. Mm -hmm. 
So a lot of the behaviors and a lot of the things that come along with that could be according to one or in alignment with one of those diagnoses. And yes, we know a lot more now to where we navigate it and the more experience you have, you learn a little bit more. But early on, it pretty much looks the same. The outcome pretty much looks the same. And so being able to understand that, right, this is where it becomes really important to get the education and the ally with you to not only meet your sugar's needs, but meet your needs, not just the need of the goal and the gap of development, but also understanding what this diagnosis is and what is associated and how to how to explain the outcomes of behavior, or how to explain these exchanges that you guys have together. So that way we're not just labeling our child as bad or labeling our child as mean or feeling rejected as a world changer when sugar doesn't want to hug or doesn't know how to respond to you or different things like that. The next thing that we need to ask ourselves the question as world changers when going into these meetings and when approaching goals is, do I understand this goal? What does this goal mean? So in my clinic, what we do is we do have the speech and language reports, but we take it a little bit further and we provide a blueprint in layman's terms. Because if the the world changer doesn't understand the goal, if you don't understand the goal and what this means, then it's going to mean nothing to you. And chances are you're probably not going to try it out at home. And then it's going to put the relationship to where you feel like the therapist is supposed to fix it. But that's not the relationship that you're supposed to have with your therapist. That's not the best approach. That's not the best way to apply. Right. Which leads me to question four that you need to be asking yourself. Do I know how to apply this at home? So this goes to question three. If you don't understand the goal, how are you going to apply the goal? (laughs) Right? This is common sense stuff, but we just don't talk about it. And so you have to know and understand the goal to be able to apply the goal to make sure the sugar is maximizing their opportunity. Even if they're at school during the day, and it depends on where you are in the country and what's happening right now. But even if you aren't with your sugar every day, you still have the most influence on their behavior, attitude, and disposition. Why? Because you're connected with them in a different way that the local education agencies are not. No matter how great the teachers are, you still have that influence. And so if they're not getting that message at home that this is how things need to be generalized and this is how we respond to things, then it's no good. It's no use. It's no good. It's not going to work. Not to that extent. Or they'll probably do really, really great at school or in clinic and default back to the same behavior at home with you. I've seen it countless times. If you cannot answer yes to any of these questions with confidence, then chances are, chances are, there's either a gap in the goal being addressed, simply means the gap in the goal has to do with a goal was created by a professional, but there was not education there, or maybe that goal wasn't quite the right goal or the approach for the goal wasn't quite right or two the communication lines are not quite open between you and the service provider and this can go both ways because if you're not if you're not open with your service provider and you're not honest with them about things that are going on and if you're not comfortable and trusting like if there's not a trusting relationship to where you feel like you can share exactly what's happening, chances are they're not going to be able to guess what's happening when they're not around. They're not going to guess for you because they don't know, right? You can't fault somebody for what they don't know. But this can happen on the other hand too, to where maybe you are expressing yourself and your service provider either may not know how to address it or this is not something within their scope. Right. And so, again, it's so important for us to take the time to make sure that that communication is there. That's why that that relationship between client and clinician, world changer and clinician, parent, clinician, child is like it's like having an extra family member there. Like that's how it should feel. If you're if it's working the right way, you should feel like that clinician is like a family member and you feel their presence gone because it should be that kind of collaboration that level of intimacy to where you guys 
can collaborate and talk about together what's happening, why it's happening, what's going great, what's not going great, and how do we fix that? And so it's an ongoing cycle and process, right? It's not just you drop sugar off, let them do their magic, and then sugar comes back magically amazing. Like, it don't work like that. It does not work like that. And world changes, I want you to never, ever, ever adopt that attitude. If goals are not clear, questions need to be asked. Find out how to understand the purpose of the goals. If you then decide that you agree with the goal or not agree with the goal, then determine if changes need to be made and make sure that it's appropriate to what's going on. Now, as much as I've said, sometimes goals are not appropriate. Sometimes what we want from our sugars is not necessarily appropriate. If it doesn't fall, if what we want does not line up with where they're currently functioning, then we might be asking something that may not be in the cards right now. Doesn't mean it won't come, but it may not be in the cards. So even being able to really see our sugar for who they are, where they're where they are and what's most important is something that you guys as a team need to determine. And if you're not sure, don't ever be afraid to get outside support. Remember, world changers. The therapist is not the enemy. And as much as I've been like, goals, 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 they're not good, they're not great. Well, that's not true. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying is that sometimes the lines of communication need to be reestablished. The therapist probably has the biggest heart. Most clinicians I know have like hearts of teachers and it is never, ever, ever within their wheelhouse or their desire to want you to be out of the norm at all that's that's really abnormal within the field right but at the same time we have to learn how that we are all human and that how we communicate is extremely important and that we have to establish these lines of communication to make sure that we're in the know and that we hold them accountable to explain things to us in a way to where we can understand right you have to be able to understand but that also goes back to you have to be 100 percent honest and do your part. Everybody has to do their part, right? Next thing, don't be hesitant. Do not be hesitant. Remember, you're the customer. You and your sugar's family's needs should be met, again, as long as it's appropriate in alignment with current functioning levels. And I'm talking about if goals are just not meeting your family needs, right? So I don't want any emails saying, well, I think my sugar should be learning ABCs, But the reality is they haven't quite gotten to that place yet or whatever you're trying to get them to is not quite there yet. Make sure that, again, when I'm talking about functional stuff, I'm saying, are these goals functional? Are we working on the stuff, getting rid of the behaviors before we're attacking other things that can impact? So we want to make sure that this stuff is functional and it makes sense and that you can apply it. Right. 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 So remember, don't be hesitant. Three. Sometimes people don't mesh. It's fact of life. Fact of life. People don't see eye to eye. People don't get along. People don't like each other. People just rub each other the wrong way. This is not time to be with somebody and tolerate a relationship to where, you know, it's just not going to work because if you guys can't see eye to eye on the simple things, how are you going to forge ahead and have a close intimate relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every therapist is different. Every person is different. It's all about finding who's a fit for you and your family and who both of you guys feel comfortable collaborating and working with, right? And so don't say that you've gone through five different therapists and all of them were awful. Like, that's just not nice. Like, then we need to check something else at the door. But in general, like if you have been working with a therapist and your needs are not being met or you have not been heard or you feel like there is some kind of gap or something that's seriously going on that's hindering progress, then please make just maybe it's time to seek out somebody else. Right. And that's okay. So I want you, world changer, to take the time to take a step back and reflect. Get outside support. Super important. Outside support can come in a few different ways. That can come in forms of journaling, writing down your thoughts, your feelings about how things are going. I'm big on journaling. I tell my parents to journal all the time, even if it's just one word to get 
those feelings and emotions out so it's not becoming like a clogged drain participating in support groups that way you can talk to other people who have children with similar diagnosis who have teams as well and find out like is this normal is this not normal do not become an island if i haven't said anything else for the month of january like becoming an island is not the best way to approach handling the, your emotional support network like that's not going to get it that's not going to get you through also installing a mentor. Mentors are great people. An experienced parent who's a few years ahead of the game, right? Who's been through this, who's a few years ahead of the game, who's been through it, who understands this process and some inexperienced parents. And that way you're mentoring someone along the way or someone in the same boat as you are. Again, so you're collaborating and you're talking and not just having a fuss fest about, I don't like what they did. No, not that. But really thinking about Hey, is my sugar getting what they need? Am I enacting the goals at home outside of the clinic the way that it's been prescribed? Am I seeing noted progress in my sugar's outcomes, right? How am I feeling about this? Do I feel like I understand everything that's going on? That's what I'm talking about. True collaboration, but not us ranting and and talking about what's not and what don't. Like that's not going to get us anywhere but mad, frustrated, and just it's it's not worth it, world changers. Remember, world changers, we're collaborators. Don't tell, let anyone tell you any different. I love collaborating with my families. Collaboration is when I see the best progress. When my families are resistant or just don't want to or are not feeling it or have the mentality that I should fix it, that's when progress does not happen. Remember, as much as I have a role and other therapists have a role, you also have a role too. So don't let anyone tell you different and don't ever let some professional on the other hand say, hey, you don't have a voice in this because that's not true either. Your voice counts. That's your sugar. Your voice always counts. But unless you speak up and speak out, nothing is never going to change. And so nobody's ever going to guess at what you're thinking or what you're feeling or what you do or don't know. Smiling and being nice is is not the approach, but also going in and blowing up. That ain't going to get it either. So just finding that nice balance of understanding how to have a conversation with your professional who's working with your child and working with your family, like just talking to them about it and giving your, your feelings about things no matter what. No matter what, they should be able to help navigate you through that that process and those feelings. And if not them, then your support group or your mentor. Learn about different professionals on your child's team. Understand their role in their scope of practice. I've been hearing more and more lately to where world changers just don't know what professionals scope of practice is. And scope of practice is a a nice way of saying job description. What can they do? What do they do? Understanding that will just clear up so much in the air. Like it'll help so much. Just understanding like what their job is. My job is super deceitful in the title of speech and language pathologist. That just sounds like we fix sounds and words. Most people just think that we fix sounds. It's it's funny. So I'm trying to debunk that. I'm working on it. One world changer at a time, y'all. But really understanding what the scope of practice is. Asking why why is this happening? Why are we doing what we're doing? Why is a beautiful question. It's an open-ended question that, that runs away from yes or no responses and ask, how can you learn to do their job? The best clinicians on the planet are the ones that show you how to do their job at home, because that means that sugar is getting a hundred percent of the time, generalization of goals and skills to push to progress. That's all I care about. You being good for them and sugar pushing to progress. Because if we don't have that working community, then we hinder progress. And hindering progress means that unnecessary stuff continues to stay put. And I don't like that. I don't like that. Right? Only until we do those things can we make real progress. If we don't do those those things, if we don't follow these steps, if we just listen to this episode and we're like, all right, well, I, mm, I'm not even comfortable with that. Hey, one step. Just one step. Ask that question. I'm just saying, world changers. That wraps stuff up for today. If you have any questions about this episode or past episodes, you guys know, do not hesitate to reach out to me at questions that I've got this kid.com. Join our community, our mailing list. It can be found directly on my website at iheartspeechtherapy.com. 
Past episodes and blogs can be found there too. You didn't even know I blogged, did you? Mm-hmm, I do. From time to time. Actually, now from time to time. Ooh, I'm working on this capstone, this dissertation. Ooh, you guys. Whew. It's it's okay. It's going to be okay. You can also find me on social media for event followings, weekly wisdom, advice, and thought-provoking information that pushes us all to progress. I would love to see you there, y'all. Next week, we're going to be discussing community access, tools for a stronger, supportive community. I'm going to tool you up on how to tool up your community, y'all. That's going to be fun because y'all already know how that's going to go. It's going to be great. I can't wait. But until the next time, world changers, take care.